All right, welcome to another live session with Mr. Cologne76. Today we've got a very special guest. We're going to be bringing on Sarah Hurwitz, a wonderful perfumer that I've been curious about for quite some time. Everything I've ever heard mentioned about Sarah has been incredible, and I feel incredibly fortunate to be able to bring on and share with you guys a little bit of history and some of the fragrances that Sarah Hurwitz has uh, created. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you can find me on Instagram. This is at Mr. Cologne 76. I am a fragrance reviewer, fragrance influencer, a connector of the fragrance community, and I host a weekly conversation called Scent Provoking Sunday that I would love for you to come and join that happens every Sunday on my platform, 1230 Central Standard Time. So, Sarah is in the room. We're going to bring on camera. And we are waiting for the lovely Sarah to join us. If you're just joining the show, this is a live chat with Sarah Hurwitz Perfumes. Hi. And we have Sarah. I'm here. How are you doing? I'm doing great. This is the first time I've ever done a live simultaneously with someone, so I'm excited. Awesome, awesome. You look fabulous. How's your day been? Uh, so far, so good. I mean, I've been looking forward to this all day, so thank you. All right. Well, it is a pleasure to have you. Um, I know I met you briefly when I was in L.A., but we didn't have an opportunity to really uh, – get into a you know a deep conversation so uh first of all i want to say thank you for the wonderful package you sent me um i have all your fragrances laid out in front of me and i can't wait to um to experience them and also thank you for taking time out to come and share of yourself with uh, the fragrance community so sarah would you tell us a little bit about who you are Absolutely. Well, first, I want to thank you for what you do for the fragrance community and especially for the indie fragrance community because I've been doing this for almost 30 years and I'll tell you a little bit about that. But really, it's, it's your kind of passion and your commitment to the indie world as well as the, the fragrance world at large that is allowing people to understand what we do. And so I'm so grateful for you and for what you do and for how you share it. It's incredibly important. So let me just start with that. Um, Thank you. Absolutely. So what was the question? So who I am? Um, yeah. I, I'm a perfumer. Uh, I've been uh, an indie perfumer before we were, you know, before I thought of it as an indie perfumer. Uh, I have been doing custom fragrance, which is my, you know, the heart and soul of my business and still my passion is that bespoke perfumery. Uh, and I've been doing that for over 30 years. I started when I was, I met a perfumer when I was 18 who had a blending par, who sort of had a setup like what you see behind me wow. uh, when I was in college. And I fell in love with the, the concept and um, the spiritual and emotional connectedness of the olfactory experience. And so I fell in love with it. I started apprenticing him and I ended up uh, working there and then um, ended up buying that business when I was 22 with another um, perfumer who worked there with me, Don Spencer Hurwitz, who you may know as well. I'm sure you yes. do. So yes. uh, that was in the early 90s and I've been doing perfumery ever since. I moved to California in 94. I had a Sears Robux little box filled with fragrance oils and essential oils and I literally started walking around like Melrose and down by the beach communities, Malibu, Manhattan Beach, uh, farmer's markets, pretty much anywhere they would let me make custom fragrances. I, I even just walked into some stores and said, oh, hey, I, I can make you a custom fragrance for, you know, $50, whatever they would pay me. But I, I basically got out there and was doing custom fragrance. And here in California, 94 is when I founded this business. Wow, Don, that is a, a very long time to be in the perfume business. Um, I know you've seen a lot of changes take place. Um, what has been the biggest area of growth you've experienced as a perfumer? Either business, either, you know, craft? All of it. All, All of, of it. it. Well, I mean, there's been so much change. Certainly it went from bespoke. I mean, I started with one-on-one -on -one custom fragrances 
And then as my business evolved, I, you know, I was in Malibu and I was doing custom fragrances out in a place called Country Mart where they let me set up and a woman um, knew I was there and asked if I could do a custom fragrance for her, but that she would sell out of her store. And since I was, I've always been self-funded, I, my standard line was, sure, will you pay me for that? <laughs> so uh, I designed a fragrance for her out of her store as a private label. So I started developing fragrances for hire for, um, companies and she became quite successful and that started started a large growth in my business both with myself with my own fragrances because I launched uh, Perfect Gardenia uh, in 96 at a, in Malibu so I had my own line but also the private label being hired as a perfumer designed for other people's lines um, my business saw a lot of growth with that as well uh, certainly with the industry now um, in the last say I mean, really in the last 10 years, uh, but even in the beginning of the millennium, like t 2001, 2002, with uh, Sniffapalooza and the Karens and the internet and chat rooms and people actually connecting that already love fragrance, but didn't know there were other people that were obsessed out there, started connecting. Mm -hmm. That is where I've really seen the growth in the indie world at large. And certainly the last five to seven years, I think, have really seen the focus on wanting people to see behind the curtain, to see who is making the fragrances and understand more about materials, uh, the, your art, the way your practices and when you're designing fragrance. I think there's so much that has just evolved. Hi, Jessica. <laughs> I'm seeing everyone <laughs> pop up. <laughs> um, the, the volume is a little low on your end. I'm not sure if you're covering the mic. Is that better? Yeah, it's a little better now. Okay, great. So, um, you're an indie perfumer, and um, I've, I've spoken with perfumers that have mentioned you as being a, a role model, an inspiration, someone they look up to. Um, are there perfumers you looked up to and still look up to? Absolutely. Well, Mandy Aptel has been a friend of mine since I met her in 99, uh, and she's someone that I feel like absolutely blazed the trail for many of us, so... Uh, I have the privilege to call her a friend, so still admire her work. Um, another friend who's sort of behind the scenes in many ways is Robin Kohutching, which I don't know if you know who she is, but she, she started out here. Um, she had a, a, a scent bar in Fred Siegel, who loved behind a lot of incredible brand development. Um, she's also a friend. So, colleagues, but also people that have blazed trails and as far as uh, really highlighting indie work, um, I've, I've looked up to them as well. And, you know, in the larger world, Sophia Grossman, who, you know, as a female perfumer has knocked so many large scale um, mass market fragrances out of the park and, and uh, has held her own for so many years. Never met her. Though. All right. Um, as a, you mentioned a female perfumer, um, have you experienced difficulties in your role as a perfumer, as a creator, as a business owner, uh, because you were female? You know, I honestly can't say that I have because I've always worked for myself. I've worked only for myself since I was 19 years old. So I, I know that there's um, the challenges that I face more in that regard are since I've become a mother and I've got two children. And so there is more of a challenge in that where I feel like, you know, very divided often of where, you know, I want to be with my kids. I want to be at my studio. I want to be perfuming on a creative level, but I also have to run the business. So there's a lot of challenges, I think, in that way of, you know, this perception of we can have it all and we can do it all. And the truth of it is much more complicated than that. But mm -hmm. I don't feel like I've had any doors shut because of being a woman. I feel like I've always just sort of, you know, if one door shut, I sort of kicked it down or looked for another. <laughs> that sounded really silly, but that's true. Yeah. All right. Um, you mentioned uh, your kids, and I, I saw a live session you did recently, and um, I could have sworn you said that both your kids – were interested in um, perfume making. Is that true? <laughs> well, my younger one has, they both have incredible noses. My younger one is definitely more interested in the blending and, and uh, being here at the studio with me. My older one, who may or may not be watching this right now, is 15. And 
uh, she is not quite as interested in doing what mom does. Uh, but she's definitely interested in getting Starbucks later. So I can tell you that much right now. Awesome. Yeah. Um, she's, she's, um, she's definitely interested in the, in the fashion and beauty world, though. And that's where her passion lies. But thus far, I haven't gotten her to get behind All right. That's fair either. enough. So are you in the studio at the moment? Or? I am. So this is where the magic what? happens. Yeah, I do. Right now, All right. I'm in the... I wonder if I can flip the screen. Right now I'm at the blending bar, which you can see behind me. So this is where we do, uh, because you, you asked earlier what we do here and what we do is a little bit of everything. Cause as I've grown the business, I've sort of had always that um, philosophy where if someone asked me if we did something in regards to fragrance, I said yes, and then figured out how to do it. So what we do here is we do custom fragrances. So. We, as you can see with these bottles, we do, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one individual uh, fragrances with myself or one of my senior perfumers that I've trained here. Uh, I also teach classes, which you've mentioned earlier. Some of my students have become perfumers in their own right, and you've talked to a few of them as well. So we do classes here, and we do uh, fragrance events, uh, salons where we talk about different materials, all kinds of things here in the studio. The other things that we do is, uh, you know, we do events outside the studio. So I've got a team of uh, perfumers that I've trained that do custom fragrances, say at, um, you know, just different uh, weddings or corporate <laughs> events. Like that. Uh, and then a lot of the business is still in that private label area where I'm hired to develop fragrances for other brands. Uh, and then we've also opened, I'm, it's a lot, a lot of stuff here, but we've also uh, in this small niche uh, filling facility because I want, you know, I started as a niche perfumer when I couldn't find anyone that was doing what I did. And now that the industry is growing, I want to support that business as much as possible. So we do, uh, we have a small filling house here where we will fill, uh, you know, 100, 500, 1,000 bottles for small niche perfumers that don't want to do all the filling themselves, but we'll have them send us their bottles and their, you know, either I design the fragrance and make it with the fragrance here, or sometimes they design the fragrance and send it, and then we uh, fill it for them and manufacture it for them. So uh, we, we strive to basically meet the needs of the Indian industry in every way we can. And as a perfumer, I know what they're looking for. So I try to make it as, as uh, <coughs> easy as possible. Well, I had no idea that all of that took place there. So yeah, speaking of perfumes, um, I'm ready to start um, sniffing some of your fragrances. I want to check with the audience to make sure that they can hear you okay because it's a little low on my end. My volume is turned up, but it's a little low on my end for some reason. Have a mic. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but it's very soft. So I want to make sure um, the, the audience can hear me can hear you. So guys, if you are able to hear Sarah, um, just drop a thumbs up in a comment. Let me know if the audio levels are okay. All right. So they, they're saying that they can hear just fine. So maybe it's just my phone. Wrong end. We thought we had a mic, but we don't. So yeah, I've got it. No worries. They, they all reporting that they can hear perfectly. So, um, right. I just, uh, wanted to, the audio was okay. So, so. <clears throat> before we get into the fragrances, I'm not wearing anything at the moment. Very rare for me to not wear a fragrance. So based on what you know of my taste, what would you recommend I put on? I think you should start with Hereafter. I think you should start. It's in the Evolution collection. Okay. Try. I would start there. Yeah. All right. It's, a, it, it's um. It can be worn by a man or a woman, but that fragrance has the dry white woods accord. Uh, it's got that sort of earthy vibe. Um, it's not as earthy as Origin Story, which gets a little heavier on the patchouli. But this one has a sandalwood, cedarwood, isoe super, so it's got that suede sort of softness. But it also has amber, a hint of vanilla, and then a blood orange in the top. This is gorgeous, okay? Um, I love sandalwood. But I like the fact that you rounded out the fragrance with a little bit of sweetness. This is very nice. Very nice. You nailed it 
with this one. So this is hereafter. I guess so we could. Do you do you want to start with this collection, or you want to start with Perfect Perfumes? Well, let, actually, let's start with the Evolution since that's what you have right now. Um, okay. The, the um, Perfect is was my first collection, so we'll go to that. We'll go to that one second. But hereafter, we're going in reverse order. Uh, hereafter, I, I was hoping you would love it. And that makes me so happy that you had, because you could see on your face that oh, yeah. you like something, you can see it. Yeah. Uh, oh, so yeah. That's the most dry, woody. The next fragrance I would smell is uh, the Now, the fragrance The Now. All right. And so I'm going to I'm gonna put some of these on paper because I don't have enough uh, real estate to um to spray on skin perfect all right but i really really like that here after that nailed it seriously nailed it you're making my day thank you so much you are welcome I know how our, you smell. I mean, we all know how much you love fragrance so that means a lot all right so this is the now and you know it's kind of i i almost hate to spray fragrances on scent strips because um, they never really do justice to a fragrance, but you can at least get an idea. I agree. And I like yeah, this I as well. Oh I like this as well. It's very clean. Uh, it does have green notes. It has a hint of fig and bergamot in the top. This one is super sheer, very easy to wear. Uh, it can be a second skin fragrance. One is here actually right now. And she just popped. In. Uh, but it is very, very sheer and light. And to, to your point of what you were saying earlier, I tell all of my clients that body chemistry is the final ingredient in any fragrance. So the paper will get, definitely give you an idea of scent, but your body chemistry changes it and gives it more depth, more uh, brightness, and really shows you how it's going to work with your skin. Yeah. So, so this right. fragrance for me... Um, Feels like something I would feel comfortable wearing to work, even though I get a little adventurous at work. But um, mm -hmm. to kind of draw a reference to what people may be familiar with, um, Reflection Man comes to mind. Reflection Man from Avalage. It's safe. Mm -hmm. It still smells. It smells really good, but it's a safe fragrance. So um, I have a feeling I'm going to put this on my skin. There's a little bit of a musk in here. What is giving that musk vibe? It's actually something that I developed. It's called, I call it Pacific Musk, but it has a hint of Calone in it, which gives it that coolness to it, as well as something called uh, White Amber. Amber Blanc, we call it in-house, but it's called Amber, so it's got that hint of Ambroxan. It's very crisp. Very um, nice. The greenness up top, but the sheerness in the base. In all of my collections, you'll find I have at least one fragrance. Uh, in, perf in the Perfect Collection, it's, it's Perfect Veil. That's like a skin scent. Like you wear it um, and it smells great, but overpowering. And that's what I feel like. The now is you could, you could wear it by itself. You could let it. It's very, you know, I've got, a, when we get to Perfect Veil, but I feel the same for the now. We have uh, this is, uh, teachers, doctors, nurses, people that are in close proximity that don't want to be overpowering, but just want to smell good. Love this scent and also the veil in our collection. All right. So real quick question. Uh, we had a conversation this weekend on uh, Send Provoking Sunday uh, that that focused on, um, you know, sustainability issues with perfumes. And we talked about synthetics versus naturals. Are your compositions all natural or blend or where are you? Okay, so that's a great and very timely topic, right? Because there's so much conversation now about green movement, natural movement, and of course, sustainability. And I work with both naturals and skin safe synthetics. So uh, I feel like there's a, a large education that has to happen here on this topic because I encounter people that think, for example, if it's an oil, it must be natural um, or use the word natural as an adjective as opposed to, you know, it, it smells natural. Well, that doesn't, it is natural. The other side of that is that a lot of people, if it's natural, it must be better for you. And in fact, oftentimes naturals are all cause allergens. And a lot of what are being banned with IFRA happen to be some of the natural, some of the synthetics. So my belief as a right. perfumer is with skin safe synthetics. So they are tested, they are sustainable, they are um, 
you know, they don't have carcinogenics, parabens, they're phthalate free, they're cruelty free. But also as an artist, they, for me personally, and like I said, I have one of my dear friends is Mandy, who is a naturals only perfumer. But for me as an artist, I like the range that some of the synthetics give me. I feel like it gives me a wider palette emotionally, since a lot of my work is connected with people on an emotional level. Um, uh -huh. Say something like gardenia, you just can't achieve the smell of that at Nate Cardinia from me personally right. using naturals. Well, thank you for that. Um, I am putting together uh, a discussion and I would love for you to join at some point in the future to talk about the same topic you just mentioned. I want to do a deep dive and just uh, share some opposing views on the topic. So just keep that in mind. I'm, I love, I could talk about this all day if you can't. All right. You can feel free to say, okay, Sarah, zip it, because I could talk all day. So, all right. Yeah, I'd love it. So the next one in this collection, and this, again, the collection is called SHP Evolution, and this one is called um, Origin Story. So I'm going to give this one a whiff. This is, this, you know, this is a very personal fragrance for me. It's literally based on the very first fragrance I made when I met the perfumer that changed my life when I was 18 years old. Oh, my so, goodness. It's, t I, it's making okay, my Okay, you're, you're like setting the bar walking. incredibly, incredibly high. Rarely, rarely do I smell three fragrances in a row and like them. Oh my you're God, making this is my, nice. like, more nice. So this fragrance is, you know, it's definitely got that patchouli base. I'm <sighs> sure you hit it right away. This, but the Jasmine Grandiflorum, this, this, this is my scent. Yeah, so... Jasmine this and patchouli are two notes that I adore. And this, oh my God, this, this is, is all right. This, so just so people know which fragrance I'm referring to, this is called the origin story. And I am definitely, definitely liking this. So really quickly, um, this collection, obviously the first one represents the first fragrance that you, uh, that you made. Um, is this supposed to represent your fragrance journey? Yes, exactly right. So origin story that smell, that's me. That's my very, when I was 18, when I developed the, the core of that fragrance, the patchouli, the jasmine, it has vanilla and musk. That core, I have worn that some form or another for 30 years. And, and love it now as i've grown as a perfumer i found like i've i've incorporated the natural jasmine grand form absolute i've added uh yuzu to this natural yuzu i've added uh you know the blood orange and and different materials but it's it's an evolution in my very first fragrance that fragrance the now i did after that because i wanted just something super clean and sheer because i feel like the world is crazy <laughs> right now and i wanted something easy and hereafter is something that I just felt like I wanted to do something that was timely and unisex and really just captured that woody much of the moment. Well, and you have set the bar incredibly high. So I'm a little nervous. I hope it continues in this trend, but um, it's rare that I, I, I discover three fragrances in a row that Right. The, the perfect perfume for my very first collection that I started in the 90s. So what you just smelled has all been done. Yes, that's the that's the fragrance wardrobe, exactly, from the perfect perfume. All right. So these are definitely, um, they're very easy to wear. They're not quite as sophisticated as the El Evolution Clone. I mean, we are going here. Uh, but the perfect, out of this collection, the perfect veil is by far our bestseller. Um, it's just very sheer so I would say you could you choose we could either I could take you in time from the very first one I ever did to the, the all right so you one. said uh, which which one the gardenia the gardenia is actually the very first one that I did for this collection that all right. one I love gardenia I love uh, floral okay. fragrances so I'll give this one a try do you know what a real do you know what a real gardenia smells like um, I think I do. I lived in Hawaii for a while, and it was a very popular scent there. 
Um, of course, it came mixed oftentimes with tuberose so, um, and jasmine. So we'll see. All right, let's see what you think. I wish we had smell of it. Oh, yeah, this reminds me of Hawaii. Now, there's, there's, a, there's an Indo quality here. Is that the gardenia? Yep, that's the notes incorporated in the gardenia. Wow. Exactly. Similar to Jeff. Yeah, it's very, very uh, indolic. It does have a hint of uh, just a hint, but uh, I really wanted to ha capture the scent of a living gardenia, and I had a plant with me when I was working on this. You know, so I... There's a hint of patchouli in it, actually, underneath, to give it earth that it grows in. Mm -hmm. And then you've got white, creamy petals. There's a hint of bergamo and freesia, also, to give it the little bit of, like, the green leaves. But, Gosh, it's... Uh, yeah, it's definitely focused on that full garden. Yeah, it's, um, you said that this was the original uh, collection, and they weren't as complex. But this is complex to my nose. This is complex. Yeah, out of my so just uh, for people's education, um, a fragrance like this, it comes in what type of concentration? Is that EDP, pure perfume? What is the concentration? Both. We actually sell it as a pure oil without any alcohol that you could roll on. And we also sell it in an eau de parfum. We have like, this is the, so I have one. We have the little, like a, a mini pure oil roll on, like that size. And then we have uh, the Eau de Parfum. You see that? And that's the 1.7, and it's an Eau de Parfum. It's a 20, uh, 22% oil okay. concentration. And so the sample I have is what concentration? 22%. So this is, a, this is the EDP? Yeah. Okay. The EDP. All right. Um, that was a definite uh, score. So which one should I do next? I don't know. I'm nervous. I'm batting for four right now. It's getting getting crazy over here. Uh, why don't we see? Um, actually, let's go to let's go to nectar. Nectar is totally different than anything you've seen. It's really, really fruity. So if you don't don't love fruity, you're not going to love this. But the people that love this, I I've got a group of women that call it the nectar. So smell All right. it and um, you'll tell me what you think. It's a mango papaya accord. It's super fruity. It dries down super clean. Yeah, we, we were getting, getting a little bit of muscle. buffering just now. So I, I don't know if it's the spot that you are in the lab. Oh, I haven't moved. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. But it, it's still it's still okay. buffering just a little bit. So I don't know if it's, you know, based on where you are in relation to your Wi-Fi or anything like that. I can walk around. <laughs> All right, let's see nectar. Let's see. Oh, you swag. oh my nectar. god! Yeah. Wow! It's like you want to take a bite. Super juicy. That's exactly what I was thinking. This smells like something you want to nibble on. Yeah. That's oh what my the ladies god. say. That's what they hear anyway. <laughs> Uh, we call it the nectar. I love the smell of this. Uh, personally, for me, I, le I like a little bit more in a fragrance composition, but this is so beautifully done. It's, it's gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Absolutely Thank gorgeous. Thank you so much. On the, skin, on the skin, on it, because for me, I don't usually go for this sweet, fruit, so I had to balance it with something that, as you wore, as you wear it, it actually gets cleaner and clearer, as opposed to sweet. So it has skin in it that's super, like, like your skin coming out of the ocean. Like it has almost a salty vibe at the end of the day. Wow, I'm I'm so glad that I can experience these while I'm talking to you. That is, that is like the best. Um, I'm gonna smell one more, and then we will take some questions from the audience. I'm sure they have questions. Okay. So, uh, you have to. You have to smell veil. If you're only going to smell one, I say you have to smell, smell perfect veil. Uh, if you're going to smell two, I would smell bliss. A perfect veil is the one only because it's what we're most, it it's, tends to be our best seller. It's All very, right. it's like clean, fresh, 
I'm going to put it on my hand. I'm nervous, though, because you loved all the others. So this might, what if this Ooh, is the one that you're like? This, this is uh, very romantic. Very, very pleasing. This is the kind of scent, you know, you're in the office. You don't want to offend anyone. You're leaving a nice sillage. Um, even at the end of the day, people are like, you smell good. What are you wearing? This is so pleasing. It's inviting. Oh, you make it hard to choose. The veil you make it hard to choose. <laughs> wow. Wow. And it's so appropriately named Perfect Veil. Like this. Like, this is the kind of fragrance I would love my girl to come to bed in. If that puts things in perspective. Oh. Well, we no, I said, this is the kind of fragrance I would love my girl to come to bed in. It's so cozy. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so what That's is the what performance on this like? What are people saying? So, per oh, let's say you it anyone is wearing it they can let you know but big veil first of all it has the oil and the spray and i when i designed it that's what i thought about like you took hour and you're super clean at night and then you got into like clean sheets but then what your skin smells like the next day like it's skin but it's it's clean but a little bit like you you know uh the performance lasts it depends on your body chemistry. You go anywhere from four to eight hours, depending on your body heat, what you're doing. Uh, the oil lasts longer, of course. The silage is moderate. Uh, it's never overpowering. It was designed for a friend that wanted to smell like she wasn't wearing perfume. She just smelled good. So that was the inspiration of that fragrance. Um, what someone loves hereafter. That makes my day bestseller because people wear it by itself uh it's like that's like it goes with everything all right um so i don't know if uh, I, i'm still getting a little buffering i don't know if we should uh we should end and reconnect maybe it's the connection So while Sarah is moving, yeah, I will gonna, say that I am around. so impressed. If it gets better when I walk around here. How cool. Sarah, this is my this is my team. We're filling. Hi. Hey, hi. This is very exciting. But we're tell, tell me if you're if the connection gets any better. There's, hi. <laughs> tell me if it gets any better. Because we're right under the hot spot, so that should be working. Here. And and now we're in my office, but, but here also, can you hear me okay over yeah, let's here? Let's see, let's see if it gets better. Oh, did I lose you? Oh. I see the no? big organ uh, back me? there. Can you hear me okay? All right, let's see if it gets okay. better. I can hear you, can you hear me? I can hear you right now, so better? yeah. Okay, All right. I'm gonna stay here then. So let me see if there are any questions from our audience. Uh, guys, if you have questions for Sarah, uh, this would be a good time. We're going to take a few questions, and then we're going to get to sniffing some more. Excellent. Okay, anyone. Use... <laughs> or I could just keep talking. <laughs> All right. So, guys, uh, drop your questions. I'm going to sniff another fragrance while we get some questions rolling, and then we'll answer a few so uh, maybe I can smell one more from this collection. Definitely. Let's try Perfect Bliss. All right. I like the name of that. Try Perfect Bliss. It's a blend of a lot of things I love. The price is, uh, Dee Dee, I'm going to answer that question while we're smelling. Shall I? Yes. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, they range uh, from the mini oils are... 40 for the perfect perfumes uh, and the evolution, the oils are 65. And then the eau de parfums in the perfects are 75. And uh, the evolution collection we sell is perfume extrait, which is a higher concentration. And those are 140. 
we also do body lotions for, I think they're 38, 42. We do all kinds of things. It's on the website. Um, so there's a, here's a question from uh, Strong Lips here. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? So, uh, uh, yes, I can. So, um, oh, we got a little bit of buffering going on. I got a call while we were talking. Uh, so we, um, I had, uh, I was going to college for performing arts and philosophy at the time. And I went, I found this perfumery when I was 19. So in fact, I never thought I'd be a business owner. Uh, I was an artist. And, and uh, the year that I was graduating college, the gentleman that I gave money and I borrowed money from my family and with another uh, friend and perfumer, we bought the business together when I was 22. So in fact, I've always worked for myself. It is not, it's the only career I've ever known. Uh, it was isn't the one that I planned for when I was in high school, but as I've been telling my 15-year-old daughter, anyone that tells, most people that tell you that they know exactly what they're going to do when they're in ninth grade are not 100%. They, yeah, we'll check back in 10 years. <laughs> so, yeah, I had no idea you could even become a perfumer when I was in high school. All right. So thank you for answering that. Uh, there's a question here from uh, Yulin. His question is, do you ship worldwide? Yes, we do. Awesome. Everything from we ship U.S. mail. Awesome. All right. There was another question from D. Fumi. Uh, do, how many discovery sets do you offer? Uh, we sell everything. And so we have four collections total. Each of them you can buy as a individual set, as samples. And then we offer something called the Fragrance Flight which is all of the, all 40. So in other words, all four collections and all the fragrances within that, I think it's 21 different samples, 22 different samples for uh, $40. And it has a sample vial of all of our fragrances. All right. So here's uh, what uh, Bliss smells like to me. It's fruity, floral. It smells tropical. Do you detect the cedar in the base? Virginia cedar. You are 100% right. <coughs> it, it's fruity. It's, it's actually has perfect nectar as one of the materials. I designed this for my wedding and my husband loved the nectar so much. And I love patchouli and cedar and vanilla and amber. So it's a blend that has the things that he loved, which are the fruity fragrances, and the things that I love, which are the patchouli dark fragrances. Very That's nice. That's where Bliss came from. On the paper, <clears throat> I get more of the the floral and the the fruit. Um, you said cedar, and now I'm like, okay, that's what I'm smelling. It's very light, but um, beautiful fragrance, beautiful fragrance. Thank you. Beautiful fragrance. All right, so what shall I smell next? So I have uh, a collection here. Uh, what comes from within? Okay, I love that. Also, that that I did uh, for I originally we launched that for Barney's in like 2003, I think 2004. Wow. Uh, so that collection, again, you know, my philosophy is I, I'm believe, I'm big in layering. So <coughs> that fragrance is still going to have a very clean fragrance where you could wear alone or layer with any. In this collection, it's called Peace Comes From Within. But if you're going to start with one, my favorite is Beauty. All right, light does very well, but the one I wear. All right. Um, that's the one you wear? No, beauty is the one I wear, but light is probably our best seller in that one. It's the floral, it's all like the light, uh, jasmine, night blooming jasmine, bring the focus of the light comes from within. Honeysuckle jasmine. All right. Um, it looks like there was a question here from uh, Marvelicious One. The question uh, it says, I don't care for popular fresh scents at all and don't know what notes to look for. I know what I've smelled before on others, but can't figure out how to find similar fragrances. Um, I guess it's not really a question. It's more of a comment. What kind of fragrances do you generally like? I would ask, that's what I would ask is 
What are the fragrances that you've enjoyed when you comment on other people's? Find out what those are. Let's find out the notes in them, and then we can really see what you're really attracted to. Uh, do you mind if I talk while you smell? Yes, absolutely. Okay. We do custom fragrance here, and we offer something called the online journey. And the online journey asks a series of questions so we can develop a fragrance for you based on your answers if you're not here to, for us to smell. So today we were just having this conversation because often people say, I love things that are dark and exotic. And they'll answer questions for dark and exotic. And then you'll smell, send them things like, ooh, and sand, some mature. And they're like, no, 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 no. And then you could send them something that's super clean and fresh. And they say, yes, yes, that's my dark and exotic. So oftentimes it's really finding out what you really like as opposed to what you want to, you know, what, how you want to produce. What makes you feel dark and exotic isn't always dark and exotic. A clean, fresh fragrance might make you feel sexy. And that's your definition of dark and exotic. So I would say look for the notes that you're attracted to first. All right, so this one isn't me, um, the beauty. Yeah. Now, is that is that pity uh, pity grain that I'm smelling? There is a hint of pedigree in the yeah. top, as well as pine. As well as what? Pineapple leaf, and actually, I use a hint of lychee. Fragrance note mm -hmm. that is like the lychee fruit. Yeah. Which I met in a martini years ago. I, I will say it's very complex, and I have a feeling that this is going to open and blossom. Smelling it right now is probably just not the best time, but compared to your other fragrances that were just, um, you know, right off the bat, I was like, yes, this one I, I think I have to wait. So as of now, uh, Beauty, I think we found one that I'm not, you know, moved by just in the open, but that's okay. We've had really... Really good batting yeah. ads. Yeah. That All right. So which one should I spray happens. next? Yeah. Uh, light. I would smell light comes from within. Okay. So whatever fragrance had the sandalwood, every time I move my hand around, I'm just getting nice whiffs of it. What fragrance was that? Hold on, it looks like we're getting uh, no audio right now. One more time, I lost you for a second. Yes. What did, repeat the question? No, the question was uh, which which was the fragrance that had the sandalwood yeah. because uh, as I moved my hands around, I could keep smelling it. Origin story, I love it. I think it's origin story, that first one. Yeah, so I really yeah. like light. I really like light. There's definite, definitely jasmine in there. Yep. Jasmine, honey, speckle, hint of free. It has, it has, uh, so I'm getting the indulge and the jasmine, but there's something uh, musky or woody in here as well. Oh, uh, yeah. There's a hint of cedar in the base of that one as well. Yeah. There's certain things that I love, I definitely come back to, so you'll notice I have a signature. Uh, this one also has a very, it has a sweet musk to it, not that Pacific musk, but there is something uh, that's a very sort of open, fresh musk in the base, bergamo in the top note. So it's got a bit of lift, but definitely the focus is jasmine, but hints of green. I like that. I like that one. I really like that one. So we've got two others. Um, there is love. And peace, or peace and love. Oh. All right, looks like we're having so, a little. Can you hear me okay? So the audio keeps going oh, in and out. You. No, I keep losing you. I'm yeah. trying to see where go in the office. I can walk a little bit. I can walk to the lab. Tell me you can keep hearing me. All right. Can you hear me? I can hear you right now. Better? Okay. Well, I'll talk in here. This all is right. the lab. Because this is where we do all the big stuff. Can you see it behind me? Yeah. And it, it seems to be I seem to be getting pretty good audio there. 
So should I go with love or peace first? Uh, let's do love comes from within. It's absolutely the ultimate oriental fragrance. Super deep, it's rich. Like this one is, was actually inspired by my mom. She wore a uh, uh, Shalimar. And so this fragrance was inspired by uh, those classic oriental yeah. fragrances. Definitely, you know, the ambers. It has This is beautiful. This is beautiful. I love this one too. This is it beautiful. Is okay, is there chocolate or cocoa in there? There's a hint of chocolate in the vase. You're really good. You have an excellent nose. Yeah, there is. There's a hint of chocolate. There's again, a, it's definitely based on that uh, amber, which for me is that benzoin labdanum accord. Uh, but it, it has carnation. It has rose, uh, r Moroccan rose in it. Uh, it has cinnamon and clove in the top note. Uh, so this one was really, this was sort of inspired by uh, my mom. I really I like this one. Like I like this Thank one. It's, it's rich. It's thick. Um, it, you know, that I sprayed it on my arm and the sea, you know, the scent that came up to my nose. And that's how I picked up the chocolate, you know, when, when you, the nose knows, you know what I mean? And, yeah. um, Definitely. Yeah, I can just, when I smell things, I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm smelling oftentimes. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. All right. So that leaves us with um, peace. Okay. So peace is very clean. So the way the now was in the evolution and veil was in the perfect peace is that collection. It's very light, very clean very sheer underwood bergamo very very simple um are you getting it it's very you, very very light scent yeah there's there's a note in here that um i smelled in one of the perfumes from uh osm perfumery or, or osm perfumes uh-huh and i i know the note but i don't know what it is so well, I'm not sure which fragrance you're. I'm not sure as familiar with their collection, but I can. This one has just a very clean modern sandalwood note, um, and that that's really that with that oceanic is what's giving it that very sheer, clean accord. That's what it is. That's what it is. It's it is the it is the oceanic accord. Wow, I. I am really impressed. I mean, Thank there were so many fragrances here, so many fragrances that I was just floored and blown away by. I mean, I'm blown away, especially that this is really like that you didn't smell them until we were smelling them together. Is yeah, no. Scary. <laughs> I'm, you're I'm, I'm you're glad I waited. It, it, it made it made the. Uh, you know, the introduction to the fragrances, all the more special, being able to, to do them while I'm actually talking to you. And uh, I am really, really impressed with the collections. Um, I think people ought to definitely uh, look into your fragrances. As an indie perfumer, you know, this is some serious, serious talent. And there's so much, such a variety amongst your fragrances that I think, Regardless of what you like, you could find someone here, uh, a fragrance here that you like. Um, I want to smell perfect vanilla just because my girlfriend is a vanilla lover and um, oh, she will yeah. really appreciate me checking out perfect vanilla. Can you hear me? Okay. Oh, I can't hear you as well. Can you hear I can hear you, yeah. Sarah, are you, do you have on yours? Say again? Yes. Okay. okay. Perfect All right. Vanilla. So I can hear you good right there. All right. So I'm going to check out Perfect Vanilla. Can you hear uh, me? My girlfriend is okay. a vanilla lover, and um, I'm sure she's curious to know uh, about this particular fragrance. So I am going to check this one Excellent. out. Let's okay. see. Where do I? Where do you have left? You've got some real estate. Are you wearing shorts? <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I'm not that flexible. <laughs> so perfect vanilla uh open that hint of is uh Israeli blood orange and up note. And then it's all about the base here. It truly is. It's got her from Tahiti. It's got I uh, got a Madagascar vanilla. Uh it has a uh, French vanilla which is a fragrance, essential vanilla and amber, so benzoin uh, a mu there is a musk note as well, but really it's it's an accord of five different vanillas with, with these different notes, but the top note uh, is Israeli blood orange. And and I was going to say that um, that citrus, that blood orange note in the top, it 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 reminded me a little of Lyra, which is I don't okay. know if you're familiar with that fragrance, but Lyra is my favorite vanilla um, fragrance. It's my holy grail of vanilla, and uh, Lyra is often described or compared to a lemon meringue pie, and so it has a little bit oh. of a citrus lemon in the yeah. in the opening, and and that is what this reminded me of. So that's amazing. Well, for, as a perfumer, I love juxtaposition. I love marrying things that have like sweetness with tart or sharp with rand. I love juxtaposition, so I feel like. The citrus complements vanilla so well. I mean, it's, it's classic, right? Wow. Really, really, really impressed. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, someone that may be interested in um, taking your classes, uh, the extent of your classes, are there different types, and what you offer in terms of classes. Okay, repeat that one more time. Can you tell us about the classes that you offer? Um, oftentimes, people approach me like, hey, I want to get into perfumery. Do you know of any places? I heard you mention that you offered classes. So can you just briefly describe what you offer? Absolutely. Well, we start with a beginner's class. And in the beginner's class, there's absolutely no experience it's necessary. Uh, there are 10 to 4 here. They're in the studio here in California. Uh, class comes with a kit. Of oils. The, the oil, it has 15 oils, 5 top notes, 5 base notes. Some of them are essential oils, some of them are fragrant, skin safe. And in that beginner's lecture, the first two hours are me talking, which you've obviously just stay long. Um, can you hear me? Um, I, you I, I was ear. hearing, uh, it, the screen was frozen for a me? second, but- uh... Okay, if, um, the beginner's class comes with it, but in class, we do the first two hours of three, and then uh, the last part of the blending, hands on blending. You can still hear me? I can still hear you. Did I answer you? Pretty awesome. The beginner's class was awesome. And after that class, have a level two, level three. We have open sessions. I have students that have been with me for, for many, many years that come back probably, you know, like quarterly. We have have groups that get together and do blend it each time. We have assignments that we work on. Uh, in some of the later classes, I'll take a piece of art or a piece of music and we'll listen to the music and then blend based on that, how it inspires you. Uh, it really, I give assignments on men's fragrances, accords, uh, but it's very hands-on and user-friendly. I do use fragrance oils as well as the essential oils so that uh, my students are successful from the first day. They feel and really like they can play from the first day. Excellent. Are there any popular indie perfumers on market right now that you train? That I've trained? Well, let's see. Uh, you know Jennifer Hardaway, who was already perfuming before she met me, but she's been taking classes for years and years. Uh, one of my my students, whom I feel very proud of, is Ashley Eden Kessler at the Institute of Art in Olfen, uh, who's she's this um, 
you know, she's running classes out of the Institute now. And I met her when she was 16. I did a custom fragrance for her. She worked here for years. So I'm very proud of, of the work that Ashley is doing. And honestly, there's so many of my students that are doing perfumery work, whether it's for candles, for their own collections, uh, or for just for their pleasure, their personal pleasure. Uh, but I think classes are one of the, my favorite things of all that I get to do. I, I absolutely love inspiring and working with, with, uh, with really just, I love turning people onto fragrance. That's what I love. Well, we have something in common. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, we Sarah, like we're, we're going to, we're going to wrap up. Um, uh, again, I want to thank you for, uh, for this opportunity to experience your fragrances and to, you know, to have your ear and for you to share about, you know, your perfume journey. Come here. Uh, I really, really appreciate that. And uh, I also want to say thank you for the comments um, you made in the beginning of this broadcast about my role with um, indie perfumers. Um, that comes on the heel of some, uh, some things I've been hearing in the fragrance community. And uh, your words just, you know, further anchored my my compass, so to speak, that um, I'm doing things and I'm headed in the right direction. So I really, really appreciated those comments. Absolutely. Really, what you're doing, it's moments like this that we're getting to connect and share what we do with people that love fragrance. It always amazed me. And I did events where, uh, like Sniffapalooza, uh, where I meet people from... Kentucky or from Minnesota or from Australia people that didn't know there were other people out there that were fragrance obsessed and having forums where we can connect, educate and, and feel the love and the vibe, like be, feel the tribe that we are. It's so important what you're doing. I'm very grateful that I got to be a part of it today. Thank you. Oh, and I have Thank one you. more person. Here's another, here's a future perfumer for you. Hi. <laughs> There's a future one. All right. So thank Excellent. you. Excellent. So I wish I wish I had yeah. that type of uh, tutelage when I was that age. I think I would be even so much more uh, in tune with perfumes. But you know, I, I like what I do now, and uh, I'm really excited to you know for the chance to meet you down the road. And uh, again, I'm yeah, really really appreciative you. of of this session. Thank you so much. My pleasure. If you're ever in LA, you must come and visit. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Thank All you, right. Sarah. Thank you. Thank you, All guys. Right. And thanks to everyone who signed in. I, and for the weird sound things, we so, so appreciate it. Have a great day. All right. Bye-bye. Great day. All right. That was such a wonderful way to wrap up this session. Um, again, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm on Instagram. It's at Mr. Cologne76. I do weekly reviews, unboxings, giveaways, and I host uh, Instagram's biggest perfume conversation. It's called Scent Provoking Sunday. It happens every Sunday at 1230 Central Standard Time on my channel. And uh, I hope that you will join us one of these Sundays. And I also want to thank you guys for uh, tuning in for sharing this experience with me, and uh, I will talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.